So for anybody who doesn't know me, I am Taylor Clemens. I'm the assistant professor of theater here at Morningside University, as well as I am directing our production of Hammer. I'll turn it over to Aubrey. Hi, I'm Brianna Pierce. I am a student here at Morningside, a double major in arts administration and theatrical design and production. I was the... Uh, Sorry, we got so many very <laughs> um, I was the script adapter for this production as well as I got cast as Hamlet. So it's been a busy wild ride. Hi, I'm Brian King and I am playing uh, Geralt. I guess I'll go next. Um, no Rubida and I'm playing uh, Olivier. Joey, if you want to go next. Uh, I'm Joey. I am playing uh, Claudia in this production, and my internet here is very bad, so I can't hear half the stuff that's happening. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it might be internet on our too. <laughs> True. <laughs> and then, Bruce, you'd like to introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. I am Bree Baltus. Um, I uh, am currently in uh, school um, getting my MA in Shakespeare and theater um, from the Shakespeare Institute, which is in um, Stratford upon Avon in England. Um, and I'm doing it online. Obviously, I'm in, in Wisconsin right now, but I have about four weeks and I'll be done and I'll have the degree and it'll be awesome. <laughs> um, and I went to undergrad with Taylor. He was a theater major and I was a theater minor. So that's how we know each other. <laughs> and, and we won't talk about how long ago that was. <laughs> no, no, we won't mention it. Uh, all right, I just wanna open this up to kind of have a conversation. So I know Bree, you have just recently read our, or Bree's, this Bree adaptation of this <laughs> Bree's adaptation. So many Bree's. So many. So, many. Uh, so I know you just recently read the adaptation. So just what are your initial thoughts or questions for any of the actors here or myself or Bree here? Sure. Um... My question is uh, to the actors, um, have any of you, had you ever read Hamlet before or had you seen it before or are you kind of going in blind? Like anybody want to go first? <laughs> it doesn't matter. I can start. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, actually, Hamlet is my favorite Shakespeare production. We read it in high school uh and I was that nerd in the back who like waited and waited until the part I wanted to read and so then I just popped up and was like hey I'll do that uh and the movie with uh Glenn Close and Helena Bonham Carter is who I remember is one of my favorite movies so I did not go into this blind <laughs> at all cool <laughs> Sure. Um, I come along the same lines. I read it in high school and watched the same film adaptation of it, but that was my only real prior experience with it. Um, yeah, I, I went all, almost completely blind. I sure. very limited Shakespeare experience, but uh, you know, probably read small passages from Hamlet, but never the full show. <laughs> um, I was quite familiar uh, with Hamlet going into the adaption process. Um, originally, this just started as a like thought experiment of like what other things could you glean from the story if you were to gender bend it all, and then that turned into a junior project, and now we're here. <laughs> A lot of other projects. <laughs> a lot of other projects. <laughs> Very cool. Awesome. I actually, I never read Hamlet prior to undergrad. We did Macbeth when I was in high school. 
-hmm. Not going to tell you when that was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so were there any things like in particular that you struggled with or you were unfamiliar with or like surprised by when it came to reading and acting Shakespeare? I guess like I have been most surprised right now, by. It's fine. <laughs> oh, Sorry, Joe. Did you want to go first? I didn't say anything. Oh. Um. Yeah, I think the thing that I've been most surprised by, like jumping into the performance of Shakespeare, was how kind of relevant the language can morph into modern day like kind of colloquialisms, um, even though it's, you know, language that's 400 years removed, um, there are still some kind of timbres that like still exist today and that you can find and relate to as an actor. Totally. I saw a production of Shakespeare or of Hamlet just last weekend actually and I was also surprised by some of the things that the actor that played Hamlet did that made the early modern English sound like contemporary English it was really cool it's cool stuff <laughs> um oh I was curious about your runtime how long our runtime right now is don't know yet. is sitting at about two hours and 15 ish mm -hmm. we're hoping to get that down to about two hours um mainly it's just we're still working on live things like that we just had off book last week yep so we're still kind of getting over that hump of losing the scripts so sure um, yeah, so I, I think it will be no problem get it down to that two hour mark. So that's, yeah, that's impressive considering just the sheer amount of text in this play. <laughs> to get it down to 215, that's even, that's impressive. <laughs> right. There is definitely a lot of negotiating and talking <laughs> about what can we remove and still keep kind of the story we want to tell by the gender inversion as well as you know just the kind of keeping the playwright's intent in general too uh, so there was definitely mm -hmm. a lot of back and forth yeah i noticed the whole horton bros uh, <laughs> stuff was cut which is fine with me um, <laughs> Yeah, it's boring I, anyway and ha half the time the audience is like oh wait what there's a war i'm confused yeah. so just get rid of it it's fine it's not what the play is about <laughs> right well like there was this kind of talk when we were negotiating that's a really good word <laughs> like what kind of a story we wanted to tell and that kind of for lack of a better word, war between the kind of international conflict versus the more domestic, like interpersonal conflict. And because of the story we were trying to explore with the gender inversion, um, it lends itself more towards kind of zeroing in on those more interpersonal domestic conflicts. Sure. Yeah, I was gonna ask you about the adaptation um process and like the what was it the title of your case study grief gender and interpreting character motivations like how that specifically um influenced your adaptation like the choices you made you go for it <laughs> <laughs> well first and foremost i wanted to keep uh, Ophelia as intact as possible. Um, same with Gertrude, like even though they were now male characters, because we were kind of playing with the audience perspective of these characters, uh, kind of 
goals and personalities, it was important for me to keep the kind of gender foils that Shakespeare does so well. Um, because Hamlet's journey with grief is very much kind of the mirror image of Amelia's journey with grief. Uh, same with Claudia and Geralt or Claudius and uh, Gertrude. So it that kind of illuminated a lot of what stayed and what go. Um, yeah, it it was more just about preserving kind of the characters and their personal journeys uh, versus you know the greater context within the international scope. Sure. That's interesting that you wanted to preserve the character that was written down, even though you were changing the gender of the character. That I find that very interesting. And that was actually another question that I had um, specifically for the two of you playing um, Geralt and Olivier like um how do you play these characters truthfully and like still balance that with your gender because we're not going for like a nine non-binary thing or like a man playing a woman it's like you're still a cisgender male but the character is very much like I don't know if you'd say stereotypical female but Ophelia is like flowers and marriage and like you know um and people find new things in her all the time and that's not necessarily how people interpret her but I'm just curious like how that worked out for the two of you like how you felt about playing these characters? I mean, I guess I can go first. I, it's been very fascinating. There was a long period of time throughout the beginning of the rehearsal process where I was struggling to figure out like motivations behind my actions as my character. Um, but as we really delved, delved deeper into the like hidden like subcontext behind everything, like there are, the the motivations as a male playing this you know stereotypical female character like they're just drastically different and it shines a whole different perspective on the character I think where in a lot of the adaptations I've watched now of the show Ophelia for lack of a better description is often played as like just a really love stricken like head over heels like kind of loses her mind sort of girl and the we've just found a lot of different ways for me to now approach some of the same actions that were influenced and said by my gender that's cool yeah i'm very i'm super interested to see it um because like back when shakespeare wrote it gender was hierarchical like men were above women and yeah, so I'm just really interested in the dynamic to see it. Yeah, one of the things I've always kind of thought about Ophelia is like, I don't think people give her enough credit for being as smart as she is. Like, there's so much in that script. Oh, I totally yeah, agree. That you can dig out. So we've been playing with that. Yeah. Too, like, just like, even in the original, how smart Ophelia is. And so working with that kind of in our minds so but Geralt how about your character mm -hmm. um I think I was somewhat fortunate in being so new to Hamlet that you know, reading what was written as Geralt I, I didn't really have the, the experience or history of being Gertrude so I think from day one with the script I was asking Bree is it okay to treat this as, you know, just as I would, or as kind of myself thinking as a dad would? 
um, which mm -hmm. led to some interesting biases showing <laughs> <laughs> me thinking that Geralt was a much more uh, noble and willing to help a person than I think he is now. Um, but yeah, it, it, the, the gender aspects maybe didn't come in as much of a focus at first, but it now has kind of understanding like different reactions to Hamlet's action. Because I feel like Geralt is a very, and Gertrude is a very reactive person. They mm -hmm. have to kind of play to the room, depending on what's going on in order to maintain power, maintain face with you know important people, Claudia maybe. Um, and in, like the closet scene with Hamlet, especially trying to think of that as, you know, how would a, a cisgender man react to this, you know, challenge of his very being, especially for this time setting, you know, we, we've had to play with that a little bit. Mm -hmm. And remind me, what setting it again? The forties. Yes. What was it? Yeah. Yeah. Late forties, post World War Two. So. Cool. Cool. Um, I'm sorry, I have completely spaced on all of your names, but <laughs> the <laughs> the Claudia. What yeah. um. What was it like for you playing a, a king, <laughs> a queen, I guess, in your situation? I think specifically with the uh, shift from Claudius to Claudia was very interesting because playing as a woman in power at all is very interesting because it's not something you would normally think of. And then trying to strike that balance between being shrill and manipulative witchy and being an actual human is something that's hard and that I as an actor have been working on for a long time. So just like exploring that aspect of being in power without being what someone would think of as a grating, harsh woman in power. Interesting. Yeah, I was, I as I was reading it, I was thinking a lot about, um, that sort of thing, the differences between men and women in different situations. Like I wrote it down. Oh yeah, like specifically um, perceptions of male lust and infidelity and female lust and infidelity are different. They were different in Shakespeare's time and they continue to be different today and so yeah I was just interested in how that shifts the balance in the play so that would be cool <laughs> thing because you like as an audience member you would never think this woman plotted everything this woman carried out a murder overtook power has this manipulative brain that is kind of easy to accept coming out of a Claudius rather than a Claudia. So it's been a lot of fun to do actually. Cool. That's awesome. I'm glad you're you're having fun. Um let's see. Question for Bree. Um when you were doing the adaptation, um what was your consideration or was there any consideration given to the the meter? Um the 10 syllables per line when it came to um, yeah. like gendered words. So like changing daughter to son or Lord to lady, stuff like that. Did you consider it and try to change it so it fit the meter or did you just say, I'm just gonna do whatever and it'll, it'll work? <laughs> um, I paid very close attention attention to the scale. Sorry, that sounded judgmental. I did not no. mean it to sound judgmental. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There were definitely days in the 
uh, adoption process where I wish that I could have done the latter. Um, <laughs> but I I did pay close attention to the expansion and accounted for the right. fact that, you know, lady adds a whole nother syllable. Mm -hmm. um, so that part was really difficult. And actually, it's how we came up with using the name Olivier for Ophelia. Um, because trying to find an, a masculine O name uh, that fit the scansion was so difficult. With like, the stress in the middle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we ended up going with Olivier also as a nod to Lawrence Olivier. Um, but yeah, there were many a time where like, Taylor and I would be sitting in his office and just counting out the syllables over and over again. Because even with the text that isn't in um, words, the text that is in prose, that isn't in verse, um, I was even counting out those syllables to make sure that like the original like uh, rhythm stayed intact. I didn't necessarily need to because it was in prose, not in verse. Yeah, that's impressive because yeah, you wouldn't have needed to, but. <laughs> no, no, but I make things difficult for myself. That's great. <laughs> I am familiar with that concept. <laughs> <laughs> I actually adapted um much ado about nothing forever ago and taylor was in it i was so i'm familiar <laughs> okay let's see i don't really have any more questions but i had a couple of like things that i liked or things that i noticed in the script um let's see the scene where um, Hamlet is queen. I liked that you change it to, it was um, the original line is he was a man. And instead of putting, she was a woman, which obviously would change the meter. You, um, she was human. And I liked that. I liked the change to human rather than woman because it takes the pressure off of like woman anyway um so that was cool thank you um i was wondering what you guys do with the scene between um olivier and laerta um the line specifically Rex not her own read um, because the line is originally a penis joke. <laughs> um, do you do anything with that? Because I was like, oh, that did, doesn't work as a penis joke anymore, which is fine. It still works within the like metaphor, but. Hmm. Yeah, we were kind of taking that scene more as kind of them just kind of sassing each other a little mm -hmm. bit, um, nice. kind of poking fun. Um, as so siblings kind of, do. Yeah, as siblings do. Uh, so I don't know if Noah has any more thoughts on that. Yeah, it, it does lose that, <laughs> the, the phallicness of it for sure. But um, <laughs> um, no, I, I think there's, just different contexts that can be pulled out to make up for that instead. Like Taylor kind of mentioned, there's like sibling banter and like, we also noticed the parallels that are shown specifically in that scene between Laerta and um, Polonium, where, you know, Laerta gets this long lecture moments after that uh, little conversation from uh, Polonia about, you know, how she should act as a lady even though she just moments prior had done the same thing like to me as the younger sibling 
So there are like different intentions that we've been able to find in that scene too. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Awesome. That's actually one of my favorite scenes in the play. And everyone's like, <laughs> really? That scene? I'm like, yeah, it's so, because it shows like a little family. It's so yeah. good. And it's such a contrast to Hamlet's family, which is an absolute disaster. And like these larger than life figures. And then you have Laertes and Ophelia and Polonius being this little like tight knit family. Like, okay, what else? I like that you kept um, Polonia calling. Olivier saying you speak like a green girl. I like that you kept that. Um, Six, one minute. Even though Olivier is not a girl. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a nice poke at those gender stereotypes that we're kind of yeah. trying to push those bounds of, so. Yeah, and especially considering Polonia is a woman and she's us using that. I just think it's a cool choice to keep, to keep that. All right, that is all that I've got. So yeah, anyone have questions for me or any other direction you wanna take this, Taylor? Yeah, I mean, I guess let's oh, open it up to... Did we cut out? Oh, no, I was just going to say, let's open it up to actors. Do you have any questions for Brie, our Shakespeare expert? Well, she is... <laughs> Actually, yeah, I do have one question. Um, since we're so heavily involved, you know, in the show on, like, a day-to-day -day basis, it may be harder for us to see. So I'm curious, um, as you were reading uh, this adaptation of the script for the first time, did you like were you interpreting the characters differently than you had previously when you read it just due to the difference in gender alone like did, you, did that make a difference as a as a reader for you um i did with uh yes with olivier mm -hmm. specifically um I was, I, I think I was having trouble with it in my mind because I'm so familiar with Ophelia mm -hmm. that I was like constantly thinking, okay, how would a, a man like play this? How would this be done? So that was, um, yeah, that was interesting while I was reading uh, for sure. Um, Gertrude, I was surprised, didn't change a whole lot. And I think you were really on track when you were saying, like, I'm going to come at this from, like, being a dad. Because I've played Gertrude and figuring out her motivations are so difficult. It's a really, it's not an easy character to play because she's so passive and so I think, or he is so passive. And I think that finding that thing that is his, um, like his rock is really important. And I think that for Gertrude, it's, um, I mean, there are different ways that, the different things that you can choose, but I think the, the parent choice is a, a solid one to stand on so yeah other than that though <clears throat> because Bree stayed so close to the original script um no it didn't uh, uh change my perceptions a whole lot and I might be biased because I am a woman and so I can see women and appreciate women in powerful 
roles. Um, and then the men were harder for me to imagine the gender swap. So that just might be a personal bias, uh, but yeah, it's cool. Mm -hmm. I'm really, I've said this before, but I'm really excited to see it. We're excited for you to see it. Right. <laughs> we're, we're just excited to put it up and have an opportunity for people to see it and give feedback and yeah. 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 That's awesome. Uh, Cause yeah, like it's, when you're dealing with a play that's like 400 years old, like there's a million different interpretations of it and everyone does it a different way. And yeah, so, so much of the nuance, like, yes, we can, or granted, I am really, really new to the whole adaption and dramaturg uh, world, but like, for as much like nuance as like I could edit into the script, the majority of it comes from the actors who are presenting these characters. Uh, Joey in particular has just found some incredibly like tender nuance to Claudia that is absolutely stunning and has been such a joy to watch. Um, Thank you. That's awesome. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's it's just been a really intriguing and fun experience yep. it's been fascinating, fascinating to work on and find these differences and kind of dig deeper into the script than i've ever gotten a chance to so mm -hmm. very cool exciting all right any other last minute questions thoughts um no not really i just break legs everybody work hard and stay positive and take care of each other will do thank you Bri. thank you so much thank you. yeah thank you